I saw an, an, an article came up the other day about you and they were saying, Evan Ross, South Africa's new man mountain. And I was like, how sexy is that? Who wrote that? Dude, I have no idea. I'll Google that as well for you. Before we get into this episode, we'd like to thank our partners, SofaWorks. SofaWorks are a family-owned, proudly South African, quality furniture manufacturing company. How, how long is training? Like, how many hours of training are you in? In the morning, it's like, it'll be 45 to an hour of moors and scrums. And then we have gym afterwards, then a lunch break. And then it's the afternoon session that's about an hour, 15, hour and a half. Jeez, that's a lot, eh? It's long. It's not, it's not like a whole day, but it's still like, it, 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 takes, it takes a part of you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's and that's, that's malls and scrums as in like practicing those set pieces yeah. as they are? Yeah, not with the, not like a set piece play, but those are just, you're just the forward scrumming against each other and doing malls and line outs against uh, each other. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so your backs don't have much to no, do. No, they do like their small skills and stuff, like where they kind of kind of make up for it is in the training sessions, they run a lot. Okay. They run a lot. And it's a different type of load, if I can put it in a sense. Yeah. I think I'd rather be a forward. I don't know. Like sometimes <laughs> I think. Today you're questioning it. Yeah, yeah. today I'm questioning like, Yeah, yeah. Why was I not this? After all that training, you're like, fuck, why am I not a winger? Yeah, yeah. like just chill. Yeah. <laughs> it's like scrap gears in a, no, no, it's in a sp space where it's so quick and it physically is, eh? demanding and yeah. your fitness has to be like through the roof, actually. Like if you, I mean, if you watch all the World Cup games now, like how quick it is uh -huh. and physical and, and, and fast. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, I don't know how where it's going to evolve to next because it's so quick already. Probably just get quicker. Yeah, that's what like, also that fact that you brought it up. Congratulations to the Springboks. Yeah. Well done, boys. We took it. The French can eat their croissants and sulk about it. <laughs> I couldn't um, sleep after the weekend. I mean, Saturday even with New Zealand and Ireland, All Blacks and Ireland, it was. It was heavy. I think it was 34, 36 phases at the yeah. end. Yeah. But um. Yeah, the ref, like, I don't ever think you should blame the ref. He's also just a human. He makes the call on the spot. Yeah. And um, a lot of times the 50-50 calls, like, in previous years, have been against us. Yeah. So, like, it, yeah. literally, as you say, it's on the day. What happens? Like, yeah. Sometimes it goes to the one team. Sometimes it goes to the other team. So yeah. It could have might Anyone as well just have been France as well if one or two calls went the other way. Like, but not to take away the guys played so well. I was so proud. Like, Jeez, they gave it all proud. Day. Anyone that's saying that we didn't deserve it? Shut up! I've had enough of that shit. No. There's been so many interviews where like, oh, the ref played it in their favor. Whenever South Africa complains about the refs, which we've done a lot, to be honest with you, everyone's like, oh, South Africa, there's always excuses. As soon as another country complains, everyone's like, they have a point. Yeah, they are they, kind of back it. That's a good point. It's always wrong when we do it. That, that's then, a good point. And I'm like, shut up, man. Yes, I The are. fact is we won. Um, Yes, they gave it horns, dude. I actually even made notes because I know you'll pick up rugby so much faster than me and I didn't want to be behind you on the episode today. No, no. I didn't want to get like left in the dust. Um, so I made notes. There were statistics that I brought up because I went into the maths. Um, and it said France had 60% possession and 63% territory for the entire game which is insane. It's an interesting fact, like, because it sounds weird, like obviously we had less position, mm. but in rugby, like, usually the team with less position, like, usually wins the game because when they do have the ball, they actually do something with it. Yeah. Like, it, it, either it's a, we get a line up, or we kick for poles, or we score a try, so, like, we don't have, we, and if we don't get anywhere, like, usually we put up a contestable kick, or. Yes put a, some sort of kick in and then position is in the other team for the other team again so yeah, play for touch or something yeah. exactly so that's like that's that's that usually like someone would think if you have more position more of the ball you you would win usually it's not the case it's like actually yeah. the team with less position usually wins the game because they actually do something with the ball when they have, have it well it's almost like the more possession you had the more you were trying to get somewhere going through phases and stuff and not getting anywhere actually. yeah yeah so it's a, it's a weird stat. Like, you wouldn't think it works like that, but it yeah. does. The, 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 during the game, they showed the percentages of where the game was, where the most amount of time was being spent playing the game. 
and it was 40, I might be just off, but for the sake of the story, it was 40% within our half, not our 22, but within our half kind of thing. And then it was at like 27% within their 22. Mm. So looking at that and then looking at that territory and possession number, it's like, okay, yeah, they had most of the possession within our half as a whole, very little within our 22, but whenever we did have the ball, 27% of that game was spent in their 22, yeah. which is like opportunity central, obviously. Yeah, um, yeah it, was, it was such a fascinating game. We, we went in, I read a stat saying that 63 or 68% of fans, or at least 68% of the viewership for the World Cup were saying that France was going to take it. Mm. And I think you make a big mistake when you bet against South Africa. There's just something about the SA squad that when people go, don't think you're going to win, they go, okay. No, no, Juan, it's your base. Yeah, I think yeah. it goes both ways. I think if you put yourself in France's shoes as well, like it must be tough for them as well because they've been told these past four years, you're hosting the World Cup. You have to work, like it's a no-brainer. You guys winning this World Cup, so it's a, it's obviously a, it's a other sort of pressure I think on them as well, mm. which sometimes it doesn't play in your favour, and it's like we're going in this bit of the underdog is always great because people don't expect you to, mm. like people like as you said, 63 or 64 percent of the viewership expected France to win that match. Mm. Um, those things don't usually don't don't. No, I'm not going to say usually it doesn't bother the the Springboks. Yeah, like. Because they, they know, we know what, what they want to do mm. and they have their plan for the week and um, I promise you they back themselves 100%. One, I completely and, agree. But they have trust in each other and the coaching staff and the whole staff. Like, they have each mm. other and they obviously have us 60 million South Africans, uh, South yeah. Africans who support them back here. So um, that's all they need mm. to, to operate. Mm. And outside influences and stuff don't bother them. Yeah. And it's also, it's like... I say we, because I mean like as a nation and I, like you said, the 60 million backing, but I don't think we need input from the rest of the world. They always will give the input, like yeah. I mean, they have the right yeah. to, but, um, um, it's always, they're always against South Africans. I don't know what it is. Like It does feel that way. It does yeah. feel that way. And, and, and I bring it up with friends of mine that are from other countries, friends of mine that are British or whatever. I'm always so careful to play the card of like, the rest of the world doesn't like us because they're always like, yeah, whatever, get over yourself kind of thing. I'm like, okay, fair. You can't always be playing the card that we're the underdogs because we are really, really, really good. Yeah. Um, but it does feel that way. It does feel that like we complain about a ref and everyone's like, oh, shut up, you complain all the time. Someone else does and it's like, hmm, good point, you yeah. know, or, or um, because one team's performing really well, like France, the past four years have been performing incredibly, and so you can tell that they've been building this team piece by piece for the World Cup, yeah. knowing they were going to host it, um, which, like you said, brings all that pressure. So there's such a, you know, higher level of we need to perform. So when someone like South Africa steps in, that's been doing this for a very long time at a very high level, it's a lot of pressure on them to beat them. But as soon as France show any form of potential, people were looking at South Africa and going, oh, you can't beat them. Yeah. Which, it, it, it was the same with uh, Adesanya lost in the UFC. And then everyone started going, oh, Drikas has a chance. And yeah. it's like, no, dude, Drikas has a chance because he's a phenomenal fighter. Exactly. Not because the other guy lost. No, no. Every fight and every game is always a 50-50. You yeah. never know which way it's going to go, which is what keeps us all watching, That's right? Because cool. you're going... I mean, a 29-28 a, a, a final score is insane. Yeah, like, that's why you watch rugby. Exactly, sport, you know? And it, the, the, the whole game was pulling out your hair, watching, going, obviously, I really hope we get this win. And then we won. And I looked back and went, I really enjoyed that game of rugby. Yeah. Because France played phenomenally well. Yeah, they did. And, 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 and so did South Africa. And because of that, it's just great sport. Yeah. Um, so competitive and so entertaining. Had we lost, I wouldn't say that. I would have been like, nah, I didn't enjoy that game at all. So obviously it has that bias as well, it having does. won. Yeah. Um, but damn, well done, boys. Yeah. Yes, they gave it everything. Eh? Yeah. Um, 
It's special to see. Oh, dude, 1,000%. And I, like, I highlighted a few different things that I thought were so cool. So I literally make, I made note of every single try. Because um, I watch rugby emotionally. I don't watch it analytically because I, I, there's still a lot of things that like get past me kind no. of thing. As much as I've been like really trying to study the game, um, I get so carried away emotionally. Like, w like we would do something wrong and it is France's penalty and I'd be like, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. No, no it's not. No. I saw it. It wasn't forward. Yeah. It was the angle that was filmed <laughs> at. Yeah, I just always try to find an excuse for something. But firstly... I just wanted to get your take on things. Ibn Etzebeth, yellow card. It's like, I was really scared it was going to be a red. Really? Because like, it's so touch and go. And it's obviously how the ref views it and the TMO and everything. But it wasn't like the rule is about a slap down, like the, the motion on the hand. So if you, if, if it's a, like a deliberate knocking the ball down, it's, it's cynical. So that then it can be upgraded to a, especially in a try court scoring opportunity like that. But a genuine attempt of trying to catch the ball, seeing his hand going like in this motion, uh. it's a genuine attempt to catch it. Obviously, still, like it's a knock and it's in the like in the way of them scoring a try. So yeah. that's why I think it was a yellow. I understand. So and they, I think they used the review system. But yes, they did. And yeah. So it was a genuine attempt of trying to catch the ball. So. The refs can, you can see it, like there's a, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but you can see if someone really goes for the ball and trying to get it back and someone who's and deliberately just, just knocking it down. Okay. Yeah. Um, obviously, going for, he had to go for the interception because if that pass went through, it was trying the corner. Yeah. So, yeah. fine margins, I mean. And the, and, the, and the head collision, how did you feel on that? Because the, when they played the review of the head collision, I know right now, the way the rules stand, head on head is just regardless, it's going to be something. It's going to be a yellow, it's going to be a red. Same as with the interception. Yeah. Hand in hand determines yellow or nothing, you know, can, can, can kind of play from there, I guess. Um, Sorry, was the, was the, the, the I, can't, I don't know why I don't remember this, was the interception or the knock on, was that a yellow card and the, the head to head? I think the interception was what they were saying should have been, been a yeah, card. I was stupid now. No, 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 because you're spot on. That, that is the argument of should it have been a card. Yeah. The head collision was, it's a definite yellow, which yeah, is yeah. right at the end of the was, first and half. And that was for the, for the bunker yes. review. So yes. they look at mitigating factors that even bend his knees. Did he make a genuine attempt of lowering his body height into the tackle? And his legs were at 90 degrees caught in an awkward position, the guy was also level changing. Uh, so that was a mitigating factor. Like, obviously it's a head on head, so it's gonna be a yellow card nine out of 10 times. Yeah. But the mitigating factor was even that bend in his knees and make a junior attempt of tackling him. Okay. And that guy just also was level changing. So it was kind of in, like it was gonna happen imminent that they were gonna have it in yeah. the collision. That's why they st stick to a yellow. But in the Wales, Argentina game. Yes. The, I think it was the reserve lock or eighth man country member like cleaned out a guy and uh, the center of them, Nick Tompkins, was like just there accidentally and he had a shoulder on head contact with the center. But the, So the lock of Argentina was cleaning out the Wales guy but he had perfect body position, knees uh, 90 degrees, hips almost under 90. Like just a proper clean and neck just popped up. And mm. they were obviously going on for head collision, but it was a, it's a rugby collision. The guy was just accidentally there and he wasn't even cleaning on the scene. He was actually cleaning the other guy. So, and the ref didn't get a, give a call or anything there and they was happy with that. And that was, that's cool to see because us as players are obviously so scared of what? things like that because it's out of your control. Like obviously that guy just popping up out of nowhere and you, your shoulder hitting him on his head, never meant to do it, but accidentally just popped up. And the ref like saw it's a, it's a rugby collision and left it. So that's it's it's a it's a positive sign seeing refs, and 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 the judge the TMOs and the refing staff going in that direction, like taking into account mitigating factors. Yeah. Obviously, you don't want head-on collisions. It's it's bad and it's obviously in the long term, guys, head injuries. It's not good, but also have kind of you know a bit of a forgiving factor of it is rugby and sometimes that happens. It's not intentional. If a guy intentionally 
like tackle someone high, head on head collision, like fine, send them off because it's 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 not allowed. But have kind of craze with mm. us if it is something that would happen with an Argentinian player. Mm. Like like there's no way of him seeing the twelve popping up there. It's just it's an accident. So yeah. Yeah. it's nice that the refs take that into account. Yeah, it, it, it's a it's such a tricky one because it'll always be on the person performing the tackle. It's it's one of the very few calls where there's no option of it ever being a 50-50. Yeah. So if I'm carrying ball and I run into you and we head collision, immediately your fault. Yeah, the tackler because you it's see your responsibility as a tackler. Exactly, but at the same time, it's like, well, what if the person running level changes? Which is which is kind of what happened with Etzebet. Yeah. Fair head on head, yellow card, granted, cool, he went off, did the whole thing. So then came back on and scored a try. That was amazing. Yeah. Um, just dude, he carried three people yeah. on the try line. Just saying, uh, that was insane. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who yeah. does that? Yeah. 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 Uh, yes, he's a unit. Um, yeah. It was, and then in the review you could see it was head to head, but shoulder, Irban's head into his shoulder, but there was that head collision first, yeah. which was just a little bit confusing. Um, but hey, what do I know? No, it's, I think it was officiated correctly. Mm, mm. And the the call that drove me up the wall, I think it drove the whole country up the wall, was that final call where Faf popped the ball out and turned to play and one of the French players was getting up off the ground. Yeah. And it came off the back of the French player and he was like France's ball. Because you see a lot where guys roll out and the scrum off just like, it's, you milk, they are milking it, they milk the penalty, like, for you sure. can't be there, but the thing is, he wanted, Andre was in the pocket there for a drop goal, I was looking at it, and he wanted to pass to Andre, and the guy wasn't in the, in the way, and usually, like, 99% of the time, it's a penalty against France, because yes. the guy's in the way, and um, so I don't know why, I didn't, maybe I might be wrong, but I don't know why the ref didn't give that penalty, um, I was actually going to listen. I think he did give an explanation in the game. Oh, really? I was like also kind of freaking out, like, why isn't it a penalty? So I didn't listen. Yes, you didn't pay attention because you were also shouting at the TV like I was. Yeah. And um, so I actually want to like watch the game again and actually hear the ref's reasoning because uh -huh. I know the uh -huh. players on the field question them fairly because that's usually a penalty. So I don't want to like say he was wrong. Like, I actually want to go and exactly. hear what he said before <laughs> yeah. so I can understand. Because that's the thing, like, you have to understand the rules and keep on the rule changes as players. You want to know that no, change. No, you have to know the rules. So, like, you, like, obviously in the game you can, like, work around it and yeah. know what to do and what, what's right and what's wrong. Yeah, yeah. As a fan? Like, you... Yeah. Can't call. <laughs> yeah, like... Can't call. Are... As someone trying to better understand the game from my very limited understanding, I guess, over the years, I'll go do the research as well, and then I can comment from there. You guys can say that, though. Oh, God. Yeah, no, you're not allowed to say that. I can say, cool. cool. Um, and then people can just message me and tell me what to do with Simon. That's perfectly fine. And actually ended up at a Tiger's Monk. Oh, I like him. The one uh, in Claremont. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, quite a vibe. They got us at a table in front of a giant projector and oh, staff like were friendly. It was really, really cool. So thank you, Tiger's Monk, for saving the day. Um, that was a lot of fun. Ended up watching there. Dude, that place went off. I mean, the whole country went Probably, off. Probably, yeah. Um, arguably, this game was just as big as the final because it is the hosts against yeah. the current holders. Yeah. So, like, that was a huge one. Um, yeah, there was, dude, there was so much to review back on. Like, the Dupont uh, head injury. Um, I don't know if you can give your opinion on this. Tell me if you can or can't because we can leave it. The Dupont head injury... And they put out a statement saying, if anyone touches his head in any way, it's an immediate red card. My question was, well, why are you playing an injured player? No, I think, I think how they meant it was like in rugby, head contact. As a whole is a no-no. Is a no-no, so I don't think they... Like, oh, you think not, they were just reiterating? I think it, there's like, obviously mind games are part of sport. Uh -huh. I think they were trying to get a reaction out of us. Um, we see you. Yeah. Um, but like, it's kind of a stupid thing because obviously, <laughs> aid contact is a, if it's done illegally, it's a red card. We just Immediately. Had that. Yeah. So like, it's just, 
it's a weird thing to yeah, say. Yeah, I don't think anyone had, I mean, don't think, I know no one had the intention of going and be like, let's touch his head. Yeah, I promise you, like, the coaching staff of the box won't say, go and fuck up, like, yeah, to Ponce. Exactly. Like, it's not, it's ethically so mm. stupid and mm. they don't mm. stand for that. So, yeah, other countries probably think we're these stupid brutes that, mm. like, don't have a regard for the rules, and I promise you it isn't like that. Yeah. Um, we want to play rugby well, so obviously we'll stick to the yeah. rules and we want to play it in a good spirit. Yeah. So um, I think that's kind of the misconception um. other countries have about South African rugby in general. So I think that's why they made that those kind of comments. And I don't think the point, the injury was so, like if you ask me personally, I think it was that bad as people like, as, the, as, as it looked or as like the media said, because like he, Came back quite quickly and looked very, very yeah, it was comfortable. Like two weeks later, and yeah. um, his eye wasn't as swollen as I've seen broken cheekbones before. So I, I don't think it was such a major break. I don't know. I might be wrong. Like um, maybe, maybe it wasn't just really healed well. Or I mean, if I was in his position, I would have done the same. Like it's one hundred quarter final. You can rest yeah. afterwards. I mean, yeah. Like you have the chance of winnings and maybe go winning a World Cup. So yeah, it's a, definitely a chance I'll take. Yeah, I think them getting knocked out and Ireland getting knocked out have been the two biggest upsets for yeah. World Cup rugby as a whole. Um, just out of what I've read, out of what the expectation was of will Northern Hemisphere rugby take over or at least compete with Southern Hemisphere rugby. Um, I was speaking with a, with a friend yesterday and we were saying like, what broke my heart was seeing the French players at the end of the game. Mm. I mean, obviously anyone would be sad, anyone would be broken and distraught about having lost. But like you said, because it's in your home and it's your people, dude, then we're like celebrating, ah! And then like half an hour later, saw the reels and stuff on Instagram and I was like, damn, these guys are so heartbroken. Um, and like, if you're a country not hosting and you lose, you you leave. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. You leave and you travel back home, and you are, they don't leave. Yeah, it's there. You're gonna go home and hear the anthems and hear everything still going on. Like, that's heartbreaking about it. Um, it's shit to lose something in your country. You can ask me. It's not like a. Off the, oh, there you go. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, like, I feel for the French players. It's not mm. like, like obviously, like, oh, are we happy? This and that. Like, it's but. I feel f like it's sport, so it's cool sometimes. Sport mm. is cool. So mm. I feel for those players, it's not, it's not a lack of feeling. Mm. And especially like if you really feel like you let down your, your people and your family and stuff, yeah. like it's not a good feeling. Like it's not yeah. a, like a space to be in. So like I do feel for them. Yeah. But I'm, um, yeah, that's sport. I'm obviously proud. The Springboks won. I'm, I'm South African. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah, we were like smiling. Um, but you have yeah. to have grace for that. It's not like it. I like, I like the way you say that. You have to have grace for it. I think it's, a true sign of sportsmanship, especially as an athlete yourself, to be the person to say, I have grace and you know, compassion for the people that didn't make it through, but for our country and for our team that did make it through, like give it horns, boys. Yeah, yeah um, please. I am very excited to play the English. Yeah, it's um, not going to be easy. No. They, no. They, they play, they're playing really well in this World Cup. Do you think so? It's, it's, it's interesting to see, because obviously they had a little slip, uh, slip up against Fiji. Mm. And people like obviously like, but that's the crazy thing about sports. Like you mess up once, and people like completely disregard you. Like these oaks aren't up for it, and whatever. Um, but like them in the semi-final, um, yeah, I, it's controversial. But I think their way to the semi-final is a bit easier than ours. But uh, I'm, I'm just gonna leave it there. I'm not gonna get into that. I might get a bit of flack on the media, but um, bruh. <laughs> Bruh, you won't get flack because I spoke to a friend of mine who is British and he was like, yeah, dude, we have had a little bit of easy all the time. And I was like, fair, look, I mean, good rugby, still good rugby. That's the thing. Still have a phenomenal team. Still have great kicking, great plays, great set plays. Yeah. What England are very good at is, and this was bugging me when I was watching England Fiji, England are so good at walking the fine line of the ref just not blowing the whistle. So when they were playing Fiji, the amount of calls, again, if I'm wrong, call me out, the amount of calls that should have gone down for obstruction were ridiculous. 
high balls obstruction running you know obviously uh, running along the line and someone playing the obstruction on the tackle so many times and like I don't know if maybe England were just so much faster on the ball that the Fijians were kind of getting left behind and it made it kind of seem that way maybe or whatever um, again terminology I don't know um, but they're so good at that they, they know how to keep that intensity and that physicality high and they know how to get under the opposition's skin yeah they do they like celebrate like everything mm -hmm. that i don't know i'm not a big fan of that because <laughs> like like i understand if you pumped and like sometimes i do it as well if you get a turnover like someone poaches in your team like it's a it's good to be like pumped up and stuff oh. but like don't celebrate the other team knocking the ball like you just scored a try it's the weirdest thing ever yeah and yeah. It, like that it's like this fake kind of energy they yes like yeah plastic like i don't know maybe it, it it's worked so far for them so kudos to them fair but um like i don't see it it's not yeah it's 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 weird seeing i think just us as south africans aren't programmed uh. like we will celebrate if something's good like i mean kwaha's poach um that led to andre kicking over yes. 55 meter i got something to celebrate like go for it yeah but like i don't see the point of the other team knocking the ball and you celebrating it <laughs> Exactly, but, like, and that was a great example because you're celebrating Quacha's achievement, not, let's say, France's mistake. Yeah, and but um, it's a tactic of them, obviously, trying to get under, uh, like they want to get under your skin, uh, obviously. Like it sometimes, like it works, like it worked for them against Fiji. So it is obviously a tactic, but I'm fully aware the, yeah. the box are aware of that. So um, and they obviously have plans to win the game, like each time, and yeah. England have plans as well. Yeah. So um, I just I don't know if we will be able to watch it. Uh, well, I, me and myself, <laughs> me myself and I know, um, <laughs> because uh, we after the Lions game this weekend we flying back probably. In oh a, really? Yeah, Straight away. After the uh, Saturday after the game, yeah. You guys play at four. Exactly, and I think it's at nine. Is it at nine again? It's at it's at nine. It's at nine. Yeah, we may because we finish up at six. Get yeah, we'll probably fly at nine. Because you probably end up finish at six, be at the airport seven thirty, hour and a half. Damn. Yeah, but yeah, I'll be almost the whole game because it's a two-hour flight. <laughs> You're like trying to do the math and find a gap. The quick math is like, yeah, we're gonna miss the game. And you, you can't watch it on the plane. Uh, I don't think Safir has Wi-Fi. It's a local flight. Oh, Safir, make a plan, there, boys. Please for the boys. Please. They're all the sponsors. Oh, the damn. Like, just make a. And wait, you, you guys are playing in Stelis, eh? No, no, we're playing in Joburg. Which one's the one in Stelis? Uh, it's in Scarlet's next weekend. Next weekend and then the weekend after Cape Town? No, no, then we're flying for a month. We over, we're overseas, yeah, it's our overseas tour for a month, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Damn, I'm getting the order wrong here. Yeah. I apologise, because no, no, you no. have told me this twice. Yeah, no, I think our first game is the 16th of December in Okay, that's the, my birthday weekend. Yeah, I think I think it is. If I'm right, against La Rochelle in Cape Town. Cape Town Stadium. Yeah. Okay, I'm definitely keen to come to the Steadies yeah. one. I've never watched you guys play in Steadies before. You have to. It's a vibe. I've actually never watched a rugby game in Steadies before. Oh yeah, at, at Donny Craven, you have to. Yeah. It's 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 a lack of vibe. Different. Yeah, it is different. Um, it's lacquer. It's like obviously the student vibe, but the people like not even just students like. People from Paul, Stellenbosch, everyone around. Like, it's it's like a, for the family as well. Bring That's kids. cool. Yeah. Um, and you got the main stand for for the people with families and children and stuff. And then obviously it's the DC Varsity Cup. You got the other side. It's a party stand, and you can have your beers and stuff hey. there. The students love it and stuff. So um, we we really enjoy playing there. It's, yeah. it's like a vibe. It's for now like close to home, but like after November. It's Cape Town. Pew, 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 pew. Oh, can't wait. Then you join us in the, in the southern suburbs. Well, you actually no, straight I'm, I'm in town. Seapoint Town Central. Yeah, Greenpoint. Feels weird. Oh, so yeah, so you're gonna go from hometown game being Stelis, which is the one stadium you play in, to hometown game literally being the other side of the road. Literally. In Cape Town Stadium. After a month of touring, yeah. That's dope. No, I can't wait. Because you're really going to do hometown game, travel for a month, hometown, like, literally. 
Yeah, literally. Damn, that's spot oh, on. I'm super excited. I'm so excited for that. Obviously, we'll be there with Sofa Works for your for your move in. Uh, yeah, um, I can't wait. Yeah, so so Sofa Works were kind enough to help Evan out with his move. Um, there were a few pieces that Evan was really wanting for your lounge. It is your lounge setup. Yeah, obviously flat apartment living is. I've been spoiled living in like a townhouse, so mm. like three bedrooms. Like it's it's nice and spacious. Obviously, flat apartment living is a bit different, so I needed a sleeper couch. Yeah, as you know, and we've got a super cool one. Yeah, I think it's in this color actually. Uh, I think it is. Yeah. yeah, I think you're in the same color, and it might be the same material. I think it is super I user friendly. It. Like I was just, like thinking, oh, sleeper couch is it, like falling and all the springs and Metal mechanics. bars. Yeah, and it's so easy. Yeah, it's a lecker. <laughs> it was like too. I think I remember going there with you. It's like this is too easy. <laughs> like just actually <laughs> moved it. I remember your mom being like. Is there anything else we need to do? Because we literally just shifted the couch, yeah, it was like, and it was like a, a queen size yeah. bed, and it was or, like mm, yeah. pillow and cushion. There you go, Maybe done. Like yeah, yeah. Let me yeah. It's Eddie. for whenever we shit faced in town and we just knock on his door. Yeah, then. Yeah, that's yeah. like for all the couples. Like all my friends are like in couples. It's you guys. It's JJ and Nina. It's my current housemate Kuni and Stella. Um, so like, it's a nice size. So like yes. uh, that's like kind of the reason why I'm, why I'm getting it because yeah. otherwise I can't invite people over because there me, and my, you go. me and my flatmate Cornell are obviously in the other two beds. So. Yeah, we'll do a lecker like break in bry. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I can't bry. I'll make you dinner. I don't have a like we can't bry. That's the only really the only like I don't have a like a stoop like a. We don't either. There's like this back door from Cornell's room where you can possibly bry, but I don't know if I may. Because mm, you in a you uh, you on floors of a building yeah, as well. I don't want to be that guy. Move in first week and like really give the other tenants all the land. Like, like oh. I mean, to be fair, we just go. It's Evan Ruiz. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'll never pull that card. <laughs> or the body cork, like they'll like, be like, like fine. But um, like I think we will definitely have a, like a little gas bar at the back for just if we really wanna. There you go. Yeah. But um, we can put up a few camping chairs there or whatever. Yeah, lekker. Sit and have a beer. Be we, like a, we we put a gas bar, and then you just put a fan. Like a, yeah, just a fan that blows it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. blow out, out the window. Yeah, but I'll... It works, we've done it. I've got a nice kitchen so I can make you like proper dinner there. Lekker, man. Yeah, no. I we'll got, we'll have excited. you over for pasta night because that's become our thing. We do pasta and red wine night. Oh, that's like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll bring you over for steaks. Yeah, I can make there, we steaks. Go, there we oh. go. Um, and we get some lekker dinner. I'm so excited to have you in the southern suburbs. It's so much easier. Like, Dude. Things are just easier. Oh, a, a friend of mine at the moment, him and his... Um, lady have just got engaged their wedding is next year so they're going to be looking to move in together and he's been asking the question a lot because my family live in durbanville and oh, yeah. we live in claremont and he's been asking me the question do i look for apartments in durbanville like tiger valley area maybe like tiger valley waterfront on the lake there yeah. the gyms across the road very important yeah. um, or do you take like claremont which pretty much exactly the same setup just the other side of cape town yeah. And I said to him, dude, Durbanville will always be my home. Like now for the semis and the finals, I want to watch in Durbanville. Yeah. Like immediately I want to go watch with like my At hometown home. people. Yeah. 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 Um, but I said, it's just so far from everything. Like traffic. I mean, you know, because no. yeah, you're coming. I have to leave tomorrow morning because you're training in town. It's bad. Like I have to leave at like 5.30. I was trying to watch just to skip traffic. Um, usually get a, like a breakfast at bootleggers before training on oh, every train in town. And, um, but they usually get there at eight. I get there at seven because I leave so early. And you have to leave that early. Otherwise, Otherwise like you'll get that, there nine. Yeah, yeah, it's that gap, like you have to leave oh. then, or you have to leave like after eight to like drive an hour. So I'm really excited just to catch up on sleep. Yes, and, and um, not have to, and then you can walk to bootleggers. It, I can, it's just a bit of a, Steep hill, so I'd just probably drive down. <laughs> like it, down is fine, but coming back up. They're going back, I don't know so uh, much, eh? That's yeah. the thing. So I'd with, with, with the amount of training they make you guys do, I don't think you need an extra hill sprint. No, no, Let's no, be no. honest. No. Yeah. That's why, hence the extra sprint. Mitigate any extra training that needs to happen. Yeah. yeah. So, but I'm excited. Can't wait. It's a new chapter. Mm. Watch my housemate and I'm currently living with. He plays Rays rugby. It's down in Boston. They had the final yesterday. Sick. And I went to go watch. And I was like, this is cool, but it, it's like I'm past this phase of my life now. Like, yeah. I'm happy to yeah. move on a bit. Yeah, yeah. And how's the, how's the looking for love? I'm not looking. 
Not? Um, no, I've accepted like it will come when it has to come. Lacquer. Yeah. Um, I'm it's, happy it's with that. It's a very liber liberating feeling. Yes. It's very lacquer. Like I'm warning you now though, now it's going to come. <laughs> that happens all the time. No, it's going to come when you don't want it to. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, the thing. This is really not a good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to be like, oh, traveling so much right now. I've got to go shoot a GQ cover. <laughs> oh, then I I've got to go to this premiere in LA. Then I've got to like go to this event in Sydney. Then someone's going to be like, ah! and you'll be like, oh, you're the one I've been looking for. No, no, it's cool. I can't wait for it. Um, it's super, yeah, wherever she is, like just stay safe. <laughs> whenever, whenever <laughs> time is right, then we'll get with each other. Um, but it's, it's like, a, it's like, there's no like expectations. Good. Almost. I'm glad. Um, Happy to meet people and stuff, but like I'm not actively like looking for it because I don't think that's a yeah a smart plan. Not that I have a lot of dating uh, experience or advice, yeah. but I think yeah. one thing that helps is that yeah, that's lecker, man. It's also someone was saying this the other day about beginnings. Oh, Charlie and Hannah when they were in here, they were talking about new beginnings, Beningen. new beninginings, beninginings. I'm talking about a lot of beninginings, and they were saying it was a new beninginning with podcasting and a new beninginning with moving and a whole bunch of stuff happening and it was actually such an interesting conversation and this is like your new beninginning now and the the headspace it makes it so much easier to be in a new headspace when there's a big change like that yeah. so you move into a new apartment or i don't know shave your head or start a new job or pick up a new hobby or suddenly you're in a little bit more of a space where it's uncomfortable but exciting yeah and so you can kind of maneuver your headspace to be happier with it as well, yeah. Um, which is which is so nice to have, and I think stepping into this new phase for you is going to make balance for you a lot easier. It does because it's like something practical. Like I'm not going to be driving the whole day, and um, it's it's funny. Like I'm excited because it's it's a, it's going to be like a more like a, like I'm going to have more time to myself, mm. and sometimes it's scary because like what are you going to do? But like mm. you find things like I, I'm like people always laugh when I say I study I do study but it's such a struggle obviously balancing that with because my job is right so I don't want to yes. neglect that for studying but like over time I will study like I'm literally doing one module a semester it sounds so bad but I'm getting oh, really there. I'm getting there like it's it's tough dude that's prime hats off yeah it's been a struggle for like two years to kind of find the because I always like think okay cool I'm gonna do two three modules but then you don't realize how much work two three yeah. modules are so yeah. I'm literally doing one module a semester just focusing on that module finish and like tick it off in a few years but then when I, later on five six years I know I have my degree and I'm happy with it. Yeah, dude. And I mean like uh, B-Corp marketing. Okay. Yeah, through Stadio. Let's go. Uh, yeah, they, through Stadio? Yeah, they, they are, they're a sponsor of the Stormers and they've really, really? been super, super helpful with me. Um, That's the Van der Merwe family. Um, what's his surname? I know um, um Chris Forster. Um, his son was in my school as well. So that's kind of the connection I had, like how I got into Stadio. And then okay. they also jumped in at the Stormer, so it actually worked out perfectly. And they super, super helpful and very on the ball of helping me and like kind of... Cool, man. They were like, listen, we can see you struggling with like two modules, let's go down one. Yeah. And um, let's just tick off the, tick, tick the boxes. Yeah. And yeah. are you, you enjoying marketing? Yeah, I'm, I do like, I, I think it's something I definitely would, would want to go in and it like helps me what I'm currently doing. Like if you want to get into some, some business, opportunity mm -hmm. while I'm still playing. I think it's a good base yeah. to have. So um, I'll take that off over the years. And I mean, like, yeah, I've got nice quiet time um, spiritually. Just you have time, you have time to yourself. So mm -hmm. um, read, read the Bible and like get into it. Because sometimes life is so quick. Mm. Like I'm very good, guilty of that. Like you just, when you get home, you just want to kind of fly on the couch and sleep. Mm -hmm. And when you wake up, it's okay, make dinner and then go sleep, read your Bible for maybe five minutes. And then it's, Dude, and it gets, so it's such a snowball effect. I mean, okay. you actually have time now to sit down and you have time. I, th I think it's going to be scary when you, cause you got going to kind of delve into things and deal with yeah. things and stuff, but I'm super excited um, to do that. Like, yeah. and just yeah, kind of have a fresh start there in terms of l life. Yeah. Hats off to you for doing that, for actually going, 
reading the Bible, spending the time journaling, looking into these things, you know, whatever your spiritual belief is or whatever your self belief is, it's just so dope to take that time. Yeah, it is. But it's like, it's obviously like, it's tough. Like, mm. um, it's not always that easy. And sometimes I like think shit, you're not where you're supposed to be. Um, my parents mm. are great examples of it, but they're super, like I can talk to them, talk to them about that anytime, which is, mm. which is cool. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, like, I don't know. It's just like this point where I am in my life, where I like really want to, prioritize that first in my life yeah. and not that I didn't ever but sometimes you know how life gets and you kind of like everything is so rushed and you just everything happens so quickly you just kind of forget it and it's bad that that's kind of the th first thing that goes mm. out of the out of the window which mm. is so wrong actually but like it's, it's it's life but I'm excited to kind of get those things back on track and um, work on those like small things just kind of self-improvement and um, I love Cape Town so uh, it's going to be like a living in the heart of Cape Town. Dude. And um, yeah, just makes life much easier. Yeah. Have you picked out like what you think your local KR spot is going to be yet? Yeah, it has to be Reggie and Penny's place, village. But I want yes. to try, I want to try Boma, obviously. Have you, have you been yet? I haven't been yet. I haven't had time. Dude, Boma's so I, fire. I think it's definitely going to like be one of the first spots I go to when I move into my spot. Yes. Yes. Um, I'll just let you guys know me go for a beer there. One hundred percent, we can go for a bomb squad. Yeah, they got it on tap. We nailing this today. Flip it's like a. It's good, eh? Yeah. We actually wanted to stock because we actually put a new fridge in here. Well, Jess put a new fridge in here. Jess and Trevor put a new fridge in here. Fuck me. And we want to fill it with bomb squad. So next time guys come in, we can all drink. But we have three weeks left of the drop, and then we can do that. Yeah. Then you can ask. Yeah. That. Then we end. Then Perfect. I can dop. Do we make it in time for the? What's the date of the Staley's game? It's next week. It's oh, the 28th. Shit. But that's fine. It's not a major. I'm only in my place after. Yeah, you end said three weeks. End of November. November. First week of December, oh, yeah. Perfect. No. Yeah. Um, I want to. I want to see if this works. I don't know if it will. Hello, mate. How's it, brother? Good, brother. How are you? Good, thank you. So I'm phoning you on the podcast. Oh, wow. Live. Live yeah. Direct. Yeah. So myself and Evan are sitting here. Uh, and we just wanted to get how you're feeling about the game coming up on Saturday. Listen, do you know how much flack I've taken at every rugby group today? <laughs> <laughs> how are you feeling genuinely? Yeah, like genuine. How are you feeling about Saturday's game? I think as, a, as an England fan... Um, we are firmly in the ballpark of we're just happy to be here. Like somehow, we just kind of stumbled for a World Cup and rocked up to a semi-final. Um, I was hoping we'd play ourselves into a bit of form against CG. <coughs> and I think we, we still lack so much structure. Um, I would say the core of a team from like hooker, eighth man, scrum half, 10, 12, 15. We have no idea... Like, going into this World Cup, we've seen Ford and Farrell played as a double pivot. We've seen Smith played at 15 instead of Freddie Stewart. Um, in, um, Mitchell has been unconvincing. So I would say as a core, what what we lack is, you know, what the Bocker have is like, OK, we know that there's a strength at, at, at Hooker in Marks and Ambalambi. We know there's a strength at 8 in Visa and in Vermeulen. Yeah. There's, there's a strength at 9 in Faf and in Cobus. So... I would say that we are still trying to fumble our way into finding our first, our, you know, our starting 15, and it's a semi. <laughs> well, that, I mean, you can read from that how I'm feeling. Well, dude, but like, also, also on that, it's like I was saying to you when when we were chatting yesterday. I don't know how to word this correctly, and I was trying my best to word it to Evan now, so I don't sound stupid amongst you and him, but what I was trying to explain was how good England are at walking that fine line of just not getting the whistle blown and how good you guys are mentally at getting under the skin of the opposition. And I think you guys did that against Fiji big time. Can I swear? Can I swear? Can I swear? Yes. Okay. And I've said this to you before, that you, you see how much I love Faz. I love Iron Farrell because he's our puss. Like, he's a puss, but he's our puss. He really is, though. But you... I think as a, as a team, you need a bit of niggle. 
fair, fair. A test match, a test match rugby, you need a bit of niggle. You have to. So, so, so you hoping that you guys have a bit of niggle to like win us over mentally on Saturday? A hundred percent. Yeah. Honestly, if I had to call it today, I would say Boca by fourteen. By fourteen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. I think, okay. I think it will be a close first half. I think once the bomb scored, like we we will try and match you physically for the first 15, 20 minutes. When the replacements come on and you look at the, the lack of depth that we have in those positions, it's going to be a bit of a struggle. That's what I would say is my prediction. Well, Evan Evan says that we have you guys by 36. <laughs> uh, so, so... Uh, Like really heavy England rose tinted glasses here. Well, dude, again, I don't want to get too cocky or arrogant, but I think it's going to be a very entertaining game. And Evan and I have both agreed yeah. that when SA beat England, that you have to streak. Oh, a streak? Yeah. I'll do a naked cold for Oh, I'm so in on that. I'll do a naked cold dip for Okay, sick. So loser loses in for a naked cold dip. I'm okay, sick. Of, I'm on top of this. <laughs> Evan, Evan, Evan's gonna come to watch. Yeah, I'll watch. I think there's a skull bomb squad before me. Okay, Dill, you got a skull, a bomb squad, and naked dip in Camps Bay pool. Yeah, man, no worries. Sick, okay, I'm in. So all I'm saying is, that's from the mouth of a British person. It's quite sad that I have to revert to trying to get under our skin <laughs> to win. But, yeah, uh, exactly. I don't, know, like, I don't think that should be your... Like, it shouldn't try, be the tactic. I'll play to win. Not. Yeah, dude, I, I... Again, this is why oh, I get so carried away because I love South Africa so much that my heart says we're just going to walk over them. But I know to not say that. To just be like, treat every game like it's the biggest game. Yeah. Um, give it horns, which obviously I know SA are going to do. Um, and then I'm just going to try to stay as quiet and, 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 and put together until yeah. Saturday. And then Saturday we can lose our minds. I get very emotional playing England, just as I get emotional playing Australia. <laughs> um, the two are very big ones for me. I don't know why. I think it's because they're so good at getting under the skin. Yeah, I think um, that's a thing. Yeah. Every time Curry or Owen give that smirk, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> they're very good at that. But yeah, it'll be a good one, dude. So... I'm excited. Yeah. That's basically what you're saying. That's, that's basically what I'm saying, yeah. So, we'll come watch your games. I'm super excited to watch you play again. It's no, been a while. You guys support um, helps a lot. So excited for it, to watch the Stormers play. If you are in Cape Town, book your tickets, go watch. They're phenomenal games, and they're such a vibe. We're going into the summer season now. Like Ice a... cold beers, rugby games. It's such a vibe. Um, super excited for you to join us in the Sun Sabers. Can't wait. Um, we're going to have some lecker times in the southern subbies. Can't wait. Um, Yo, yeah, bro, you'll be a southern suburb now. Yo, um, okay, proper Cape Townian. Yo, yeah, dude, you'll be doing promenade on Saturday mornings. So basic. Yeah, your, your bootlegger coffee, yeah. oh, your early basic. 5 a.m. wake-ups, the cool kids do that. Every, yeah, so it's not cool anymore because everyone yeah. does it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're going to be doing a yoga class every Saturday you morning. ever find me in a yoga class. Yeah. <laughs> Ever. Hot room if yoga, you you're going to go to that. Class, something's wrong. <laughs> like, come fetch me or book me yeah. in somewhere. Like, yeah. Tell me, call my parents. Come fetch me. <laughs> Take him back to Steady's. It's enough now. Completely lost the plot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing yoga with a bright orange headband on. And like, he's uh, saying namaste and shit. So like, just... How cool would that be? Come fetch this guy. No, yeah, like, yeah. then I've completely <laughs> lost my rocks. Completely. No. <laughs> We're going to come into your apartment. There's just like a giant Buddha in the corner. Oh, you no. sitting legs my crossed, would, floating. My yeah. mom would crap her pants. Like, she would completely lose her shit. No. Like, I think she'll hit me. Probably. Um, we, we had uh, Daniel... I don't want to say his name wrong. Daniel Stainman from Old School. Oh, yeah, yeah, Daniel, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had him on. I, so, f- I love that oak. We had him on. He's so much fun. And we were talking about rugby players going to the NFL. Could we actually rugby had a players... chat about that today. Really? At practice? Yeah, just in terms of like, like I just re- like made a remark like, 
if you do well in your combine, if you can actually like bench and deadlift and run quick and have a, like a vertical jump and a horizontal jump, like that's crazy yeah. stats. You kind of make it in the team. Yes. Where in rugby is like you can have the shittest stats in terms of bench, squats and like all that. But if you can run and you can tackle and you have a heart for it, then you can make a team. See, this is why I think there's, oh, I'm going to get so much flack for this. I think there's more skill in rugby than there is in NFL generally so yeah. I'm saying every position on the field well if you think about it only the quarterback passes the ball in the NFL yeah like you can I've like seen plays where guys like can pass back but it's not a thing in NFL no. where 1 to 15 1 to 23 will, must be able to catch and pass yes and but they like in other like stance like the the amount of plays they have to remember is that's, crazy that's like, the I think thing. that's where rugby struggle, like, players with struggles we have set plays and stuff but they have like so much and yeah. we don't have that much in a full yeah. game. Yeah. And um, the type of af- athletes, like the running backs and the, and the linebackers, like they proper athletes. Oh, they next level. Like those, yeah. I yeah. mean, 10 meters to like, let's say 30 meters, the, how quick they are and, and changing direction. Uh, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, so it will be interesting to see. I think we were like, if you don't grow up with it, that's the thing. If you don't grow up with American football, I think it's... Well, <sighs> That's a good way of putting it because you don't have it inbred into you exactly. to understand the plays and the... You watch it from a young age. Exactly. And stuff. But I think if you took, and I think this is the best way to put it, if you took NFL players and you took rugby players and you told them to swap sport, there's no ways that NFL players could do rugby as well as rugby players could do NFL. No. Just purely based on how tough physically the morning rugby is in terms of like repeating, repeated efforts of getting up yeah. Tackling, running. Yeah. Oh, so rugby's flat out 40 minutes, flat out 40 minutes. NFL is an average of like 15 seconds per play. And it's four hours to four quarters. Like four quarters, it's a lot more spread out. So, so like different kind of physicality involved, I guess, a lot of like fast bursts. Yeah. But I mean, if you put Kitsi, Irbin, Sneiman, if you put them on the front line of NFL... I think they do a pretty good job of holding off a couple of those guys. They will. But those guys are big. They're like, not, huge. not only tall, like they're big. Yeah. But it's, and I mean, it's their job to be heavy, yeah. right? Because you're only moving four meters at exactly. a time. Exactly. So, like, it's a different kind of athlete. Granted, yeah. Um, I'll say it looks easy. I might be wrong. Like, once again, sorry if I, because I don't know a lot about it. Like, I don't either. I want to see. But that's I why I love these conversations. It's like, it's with Salah spend time it. with you. South Africa's next man mountain. <laughs> Apparently, I don't know where that article is. Yeah. I'm going to try to find it for you because I read it and I was like, this is really cool. I'm cringing. I don't know why it's South so Africa's weird. man mountain. <laughs> I'm in. Let's do it. There's a few bigger guys than me. <laughs> oh. Oh. Flip my legs. <sighs> Dude, you must be knackered after that. I'm going to take a proper nap now on my couch. Really? In a few months, it will be a self works couch. Yeah, there we 